Tatsuya Iguchi, was serving his detention period in a youth detention center because he often causes chaos. He's the fifth-generation leader of the Tokyo Koma Motorcycle Gang and is nicknamed the Mad Dog because of his madness in a fight. Iguchi had been in a youth detention center since he was 17. But he never learned from his mistakes and instead continued to cause problems. Finally, he was thrown into solitary confinement to serve his sentence, folding 1,000 paper cranes which made it feel like he was in a hell. Six months passed and Iguchi finally left the youth detention center. An officer warned him not to cause any more trouble and return to this place. However, two teenagers passing in front of Iguchi provoked him and said that Iguchi was a stupid boy and didn't dare to fight them. They also said that Iguchi was safe because there was a policeman who was protecting him, otherwise he would definitely be beaten up by them. Iguchi was furious hearing that ridicule, so he decided to beat them up. He didn't care even though he had just left that detention center. Three months later, Iguchi came out of that detention again, and the policeman warned him not to do anything wrong again. Time passed. At a restaurant, Ishido, the chief inspector of juvenile crime police, met Mr. and Mrs. Kim, Iguchi's guardians during his trial period. Iguchi would work at the restaurant as a waiter. Mr. and Mrs. Kim would try to help Iguchi during his rehabilitation period, so he could become a good boy by obeying the law and staying away from criminals. Before going home, Ishida warned Iguchi not to commit any more stupid things in this city. Ishido also advised Iguchi not to meet the people from the motorcycle gang. Iguchi had to walk with his head down, and if Ishido heard that Iguchi was getting into trouble again, he would come as soon as possible and take Iguchi to prison. Shortly when Iguchi bought cigarettes at the supermarket, he accidentally saw a Kawasaki FX was parked. Iguchi was very impressed with the motorbike because it was one of his dream motorbikes. However, the owner of the motorcycle, A.B. Kaname, was not happy if a stranger touched his motorbike. He even invited Iguchi to fight with him. However, Iguchi remembered his uncle's kindness who was willing to accept him during his trial period. So he asked Abi to fight behind the supermarket so that no one would see them. Abi didn't expect that someone would want to fight with him and he suspected that if Iguchi was not from that city. Abi would give Iguchi all his cigarettes if Iguchi could beat him in a duel. Hearing that, Iguchi became even more enthusiastic, but he only wanted to do a sumo fight because he didn't want to violate the agreement he made with Ishido. Abi was shocked but he didn't care, he kept asking Iguchi to fight freely with him. Finally, Abi complied with Iguchi's request to have a sumo match, even though he didn't know why Iguchi really wanted to have a sumo fight with him. Iguchi managed to win the fight and according to his promise, Abi gave him the cigarettes. Abi then introduced himself, saying that he was the deputy leader of the Kirihito gang. Abi asked Iguchi not to tell everyone that he had lost to him. Iguchi also introduced himself that he was also part of a Tokyo Kome outlaw gang from Cheba. Now he has undergone probation in this city after leaving juvenile prison, and he's working at the Yakiniku restaurant called Sanrui. Abi began to talk about his gang which consists of 100 members. Kirihito was led by Tanzawa Atsusi, an unbeatable man, who was really great in fighting, even 10 people would not be able to defeat him. Abi Kanane was the deputy head of Kirihito, and then they had Taguchi Masaro, a former member of the judo club, and he's the strongest in the gang. There was the captain of the guard, Meguru Suya, the craziest boxer and the best strategist in Kirihito. After that, there was a special forces captain, Nagashima Kigo. He's the swordsman, even AB couldn't beat him if he had a stick in his hands. Next, they had new members who also have tremendous fighting power, Yuta Shogo, the god of thunder, and Soamura Ryo, the god of wind. After hearing Abe's explanation, Iguchi was very excited because in this city, there were lots of people like him. However, he was still in his probation period, so he would not be able to fight for now. Hearing this excuse, Abi was surprised and looked down on Iguchi, because there was no way a weak person like Iguchi would be able to face them. The next day, Abi ate at Iguchi's uncle's restaurant. Iguchi was surprised because he didn't expect that Abi would come to that place and Abi said that he was just stopping by. While they were chatting, they saw news on television about a car accident and the driver died. The police who handled the accident said that they found drugs in the car. Here, Ebi wasn't very surprised because he suspected that it was all because of the Bakurikin gang, a crime gangster. In a nightclub, the Bakurikin gang was holding a meeting to discuss their opportunities in doing illegal business, considering the economic conditions. It could be easier for them to provoke the community to use drugs. The Bakurikin gang led by three brothers. 
The oldest brother was Shimohara Kazumasa, the second brother was Shimohara Koji, and the youngest was Shimohara Kenzo. Suddenly, the neighborhood gang led by Harakawa came inside the bar with one of Bakurikin's men. Harakawa said that this man had crashed into his car, so he asked Kazumasa to pay the car repair fees and also the medical expenses worth 1 million yen. Without talking much, Kazumasa immediately gave the money to Harakawa. In fact, he would add another 1 million yen if Harakawa could beat him in a one-on-one -on -one fight. But if Harakawa lost, he had to give 2 million yen to him. Getting this challenge, Harakawa was very excited, moreover he always looked down on Kazumasa. Harakawa lost in the fight, and he had to pay 2 million yen. However, Harakawa and the gang were only able to pay 1 million yen, so Kazumasa gave them more time to pay with one condition. They had to fight against the Kirihito gang, and if they refused, they couldn't get out of there alive. Meanwhile, Iguchi was walking towards the restaurant after buying some groceries, and he accidentally met A.B. who was going to the bowling alley to meet his gang. A.B. offered Iguchi to come with him and meet his friends. Abi said that once, there was a battle involving four big gangs in this place. They were Gurao, Kirihito, Ashura, and S.I.D. However, it turned into a tragedy because many people died in the fight. Those gangs then agreed to sign a non-aggression statement to prevent another war happening in the future. When they got there, some members of Kirihito's gang didn't like Iguchi's presence. They seemed to look down on him because Iguchi looked too weak to join them. They even kept insulting Iguchi. The leader of the Kirihito, Tanzawa Atsushi, introduced himself to Iguchi. However, Iguchi was in a bad mood because of the Kirihito gang, so he no longer cared about his probation status and tried to challenge them to a fight. But suddenly, Chihiro, a woman who works at the bar, tried to stop the commotion. It seemed like the Kirihito gang really respected her, even Tanzawa looked very obedient and afraid of Chihiro. But Iguchi was very angry with Chihiro because she dared to interfere with the men's affairs. Iguchi said that he couldn't be looked down even if he had to die in a fight. Hearing that, Chihiro became increasingly annoyed, and that's why she really hated gangsters because they only cared about self-esteem, but they couldn't see how the people around them would react. She then allowed them to fight as much as they liked, but she would also call the police. Iguchi finally gave up because he didn't want to go back to prison, as did Tanzawa, who finally closed down this meeting. Abi then told Iguchi that the woman's name was Minagawa Chihiro and she worked part-time at this place. She was the younger sister of Minagawa Josuke, the fifth-generation leader of the Kirihito gang, who led the big war that Abi talked about earlier. And Josuke died in that battle. Chihiro started working part-time six months after the war happened, and she was determined to stop all violence in this place, even though this would be the most difficult place for her. If something happens to Chihiro, Kirihito would not stay silent, even though they would violate the non-aggression agreement which would cause the balance to collapse. Time passed, Iguchi was now at Abi's place with his other friends. Here, Shogo gave information that the Bakurikan gang has started attacking several of Kirihito's members. The Bakurikan was run by three brothers Guevara. Genzo, the youngest brother, was fighting using a chain and he was really dangerous. The second brother, Koji, is strong, fast and fierce. Kazumasa, the oldest brother, only thinks that the gang is just his place to play around, because his goal is bigger than that. They created a gang just as a media to distribute drugs, launder money, and record adult videos. They try to control the underground world, moreover, rumors say that in the past, Kazumasa shot a thug who had a dispute with Bakurikan. The Kirihito members finally gathered at the bowling alley to discuss this serious problem, especially since they heard that now, the number of members of the Bakurikan has increased drastically. Meanwhile, the number of Kirihito gang members has decreased after the attack from the Bakurikan gang. If they attack without any preparation, then it would make them lose more and more members. Meanwhile, Iguchi met Chihiro, who was praying at the location where her brother died. Iguchi has heard all the stories about her brother's death, and he is sorry for his death. Chihiro then said that today was her brother's birthday. When her brother was still alive, she never gave him flowers on his birthday. But after her brother died, she often gave him flowers. Chihiro hoped that there would be no more violence in this city, and she didn't want to see people die ridiculously because of fighting, because many people would be sad. Not long after, the Bakurikan gang came to the bowling arena to meet the Kirihito officials. Chihiro tried to stop the fight between them, but instead she got a slap from Kazumasa, which made Iguchi mad. 
However, Iguchi was stopped by Kenzo using his weapon, causing Iguchi's head to bleed. Even though he got an attack like that, Iguchi didn't want to fight back against them because he remembered Chihiro's words that she didn't want to see anyone fighting in that place anymore. Tanzawa then asked their purpose in coming to that place. He asked whether they wanted to get rid of them and become one of the big four in that city. But Kazumasa said that he wasn't interested in things that didn't give him a single profit, because all of this is just for his business. He only wanted to do drug dealing business in this place. However, because of the Kirihito gang here, they cannot freely rule in this place. Tanzawa knew their true intentions, so he wouldn't let them damage this place, and would immediately destroy them all when the time comes. The next day, Mr. Kim taught Iguchi how to make delicious food at the restaurant. Mr. Kim also told the story when he started this business. At first he just wanted to eat yakiniku for free, but he soon realized that the same meat tastes different, depending on how it is cut, and he saw how the customers enjoyed his cooking, so he decided to live his life with yakiniku. Mr. Kim said even though Iguchi was stupid, he's not trash, so Iguchi had to try to protect what is important to him. Suddenly, Mrs. Kim went into the kitchen and told Iguchi that his friend was here, and he's Tanzoa. Mrs. Kim was very happy that Iguchi had many friends in this city. So she gave some free yakiniku to Tanzoa. But when Tanzoa and Iguchi were chatting, some customers shouted asking for payment bills. But the customer's attitude was a bit annoying. He even looked down on Iguchi, because they thought that Iguchi was a bad boy who couldn't learn. Even in society, people like him were in the lower class because they had no education. Luckily, Mrs. Kim managed to calm the situation down so that Iguchi could calm his emotions. However, Tanzawa couldn't hold his anger. After finishing the three of them, Tanzawa waited for Iguchi, then invited him to go for a walk on the beach using his motorbike. Tanzawa tried to invite Iguchi to join the Kirihito gang because he's worried that Iguchi would be targeted by the Bakurakan. However, Iguchi couldn't give an answer to Tanzawa because for him, the problem with the Bakurakan was a personal matter so he would solve this problem himself. Even so, Iguchi was grateful because Tanzawa cared so much about him. At the Bakurikin's base, Kazumasa already had a plan to attack the Kirihito gang's hideout. They had targeted some locations of each Kirihito member and everything had been well planned. However, Ryo's younger sister, Megumi, felt worried about her brother's condition after learning of the plan. In fact, she was planning to leave the place to tell her brother about a big plan that was going to be carried out by the Bakurikin gang. However, it seemed that Kazumasa had another plan by offering Megumi the drugs he had prepared. All the members of the Kirihito gang were seen gathering and eating at Mr. Kim's restaurant. They were happy to be there because the place was close to the bowling alley and the food was also delicious. Mrs. Kim was very kind and often gave them free food. When Ryo came to the restaurant, Kenzie looked very suspicious because Ryo's expression looked like he was hiding something after he got a call from his sister. After they all finished eating at the restaurant, A.B. invited Iguchi to talk in private, and he also asked Shogo to take his motorbike to the gas station, and he would follow him after he talked to Iguchi. Here, A.B. asked Iguchi not to get involved with the Bakurikin gang because he didn't want to see Iguchi go back to juvenile prison. A.B. saw Mrs. Kim's sincerity towards Iguchi, so he didn't want to make Mrs. Kim sad. However, Iguchi refused because the masked man had lowered his pride, so he had to destroy him first. Iguchi was so angry that he threw Abe, making Abe fall near to a pot and causing him to suffer a slight injury on his shoulder. Chihiro was confused about what was going on between them. They were just silent and then Abe left from there. Finally, Chihiro asked Iguchi about what had happened between him and Abe when Iguchi took her to the station. Iguchi said that Abe had punched him once, so he threw Abe once and it wasn't a fight. Iguchi also said that he could get in trouble if he got involved in a fight again and he could get caught and go to juvenile prison again. Hearing that, Chihiro was a bit surprised because she just found out that Iguchi had just come out of juvenile prison, but what she knew is that Abe really cared about Iguchi. Even though Abe looked like that, he really was a caring person. Abe felt the pain in his shoulder, but he couldn't get angry with Iguchi. Even though Iguchi looked stupid and arrogant, he's trying hard to not get involved with the gang and try to solve his own problems. Suddenly, the Bakurikin gang led by Kenzo surrounded the two of them, and the other Bakurikin gangsters also surrounded the secret place of the Kirihito gang. Even Mr. Kim's restaurant was also targeted by the Bakurikin gang led by Koji, while Kazumasa attacked the bowling arena where Kenzi was. After the sudden attack, Iguchi got a call from Chihiro. 
telling him that some members of the Kirihito gang had suffered serious injuries and were now being treated in hospital. When Iguchi arrived at the hospital, he got news that Shogo had two stitches on his head and his arm was broken. While Abi also had two broken ribs, a broken leg, and eight wounds on his body, he's currently unconscious and in critical condition. Suya said that Abi couldn't be defeated easily, even though 15 people attacked him. However, they heard that Abe's shoulder was hurting before the Bakurikan gang surrounded him. Because of that, Suya asked Iguchi what he had done after they all left the restaurant. Not long after, Ishido and his subordinates came to the hospital, asking for information about the fight between the Kirihito gang and the Bakurikan gang. But before they left, Tanzawa said that Iguchi was not part of the Kirihito gang, he was just an outsider who accidentally got to know them. Chihiro and Kizi decided to go home, leaving Iguchi alone to accompany Abi at the hospital. But suddenly, a car approached them and it was the Bagurikan gang who were trying to kidnap Chihiro. They beat Kizi and said if they wanted to save Chihiro, they had to come to Hayama, an empty building. The next day, the police finally released the top leaders of the Kirihito gang. Kenzi then asked Ryo, who he was talking to him on the phone when they were at the Yakiniku restaurant. Ryo told them honestly and apologized to them, saying that he was the one who leaked all the information to the Bakurikin gang. He was forced to do that because they forced his younger sister to use drugs and they recorded all of that. Tanzawa was very angry and asked him not to come again to meet them. Soya then got a call from Kiji who said that Chihiro had been kidnapped by the Bakurikin gang. Hearing that, Tanzawa decided to go there alone because he didn't want to see his friends get hurt again, and he asked his friends not to worry, even if he went alone he wouldn't lose that easily. However, Tanzawa's friends wouldn't let him go alone, because for them, the Kirihito gang was more than just friendship. Ishido deliberately let go of them because he also wanted to arrest the Bakurikin gang which was difficult for them to catch. Ishido deliberately let them fight, so that the police could arrest the two gangs at once. Meanwhile, when Iguchi was cleaning up the restaurant, Kizi met him and said that Chihiro had been kidnapped by the Bakurikan. They also asked the Kirihito gang to come to the empty factory building. Iguchi then met with the others who were also heading to the Hayama factory to help Chihiro. Finally, the six of them had arrived at the empty building, the Hayama factory. They were ready to face dozens of members of the Bakurikan gang in order to save Chihiro. Ryo was very sorry for betraying them, he had arrived there to help them save Chihiro. He and his friends would try to hold back the people outside so that Kenzi, Tanzawa, and Iguchi could enter the building and fight the leader of the Bakurkin gang. Kenzi would hold Koji in the hallway and ask Tanzawa and Iguchi to immediately go upstairs to save Chihiro. Finally, the two of them arrived at the room where Chihiro was being held. But because Kazumasa was not there, Tanzawa asked Iguchi to solve the problem here while he would go to the roof of the building and finish off Kazumasa. Without talking much at the rooftop, Tanzawa finished off all Kazumasa's men and then had a duel with the supreme leader of the Bakurikin gang. After successfully finishing off Kenzo, Tanzawa tried to unteach a hero, but suddenly, Kazumasa, who was still alive, tried to stop them with his gun. But from behind Kenzo, who was still strong enough to stand up, tried to stop Kazumasa because he thought that they had lost and there was no need to do anything further. The sound of police sirens was heard, and Kenzo asked them to immediately leave the place via the emergency stairs behind the building. The Bakurikan gang was over, and he would be responsible for resolving all of this in front of the police. Kenzo then met Ishido, saying that this was just an internal problem within the Bakurikan gang, and there were no other gangs involved in their internal problems. Before the film ended, Abi was seen waking up from his coma, and they all celebrated this victory with great pride.